Hey, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Hema with me, Jamie McKeever. Um, today, I am going to continue on my little mini series where I'm talking about tournament rule design. Um, and I'm going to start delving into some specific rule choices. Uh, so I thought I'd start with the, the least uh, controversial, uh, which is the difference between at blows and uh, right of way. Um, and go more generally what that's all about. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm being very tongue-in-cheek when I say least controversial because it is incredibly controversial and kind of more tribal than I think it should be, which is one of the things I really want to get across today in that you know, certain regions favor using a right away, certain regions favor using an afterglow, uh, and they get very defensive about it. They, they sort of seem to think that their way is the best way. And uh, I'm going to start this by saying I think both are bad, but we kind of need them, so you know it's kind of a necessary evil in all cases, and it's worth keeping that in mind rather than thinking one is superior to the other. Think about which one you want to do and how that affects things. So, what are they? Just in case you're not familiar, well, um, I'll take a step back before that. Um, what because they're both trying to solve the same problem, right? Uh, in two slightly different ways, they're both trying to remind you that you should defend. In fact, there's two different problems they're trying to solve. One is that they're to remind you to defend in a slightly different circumstance. I'll come back to that. And the other is to solve what happens when both people have hit, been hit and essentially apportion blame, right? And from a tournament perspective, they, they end up having a scoring result, right, as a, as a result of that. So whenever they kick in, both fences have been struck, right? And that's important because if you fence cleanly, after blow or double or right away makes no difference at all because if you fence cleanly, you haven't been hit, you're fine, right? Uh, which is why I say they're both a bit shit because th- at the end of the day, what we're deciding is who was most at fault in a situation where both fences got hit. Um, right of way essentially prioritizes whoever started the action. There's different ways of defining it, right? It could be that they actually started the attack. It could be that they have presented a threat in some way, shape, or form. But if someone has started their attack, and that's given to judge to have priority, right, um, and they've connected, it doesn't matter whether they've been struck back because they started the attack, they had priority, they had right away, the other person is at fault for not uh, recognizing that, not dealing with it. And in pretty much every right away system, what they're trying to say is what you should have done is parried it, which then gives you the right of way probably, depending on, on the system, and then do your post, and then that post happens, and if the person has done an immediate follow-up attack and you've both been hit on that one, it doesn't matter. You who had the, did the post had right away, so you succeed. So it decides, it, it basically defines out doubles, right? It says, we don't have doubles. What we have is two people we're hit, but one's at fault, and they win the point. After blow um, uh, has a little bit of a different description, and what happens with after blow, and this after blow I think varies quite a bit more because it depends on some other rules how it kind of fits in. But the short version is after someone has landed a hit, doesn't matter who started the hit first, doesn't matter what happened first, as soon as a hit has been landed, there is some window of time, uh, and that again depends on rule set, some window of time to strike back. Um, and what happens when you strike back will depend on the rule set, right? You might negate the points, you might just lower the points, you might, if you have a higher scoring target, you might actually gain points from that. You know, different rule sets kind of settle on that, and I think I'll probably do a bit more of a deep dive into different flavors of app blow on a different video, um, you know, because uh, I think there's a lot of nuance to it, um, and I, I've got more experience with app blow than I have with right away. I'll, I should say that up front. Um, so, Rather than talk about, well, there's pros of both, right? Um, and like in an ideal world, they're both targeting a different kind of forgetting about defense. In an ideal world, again, I'll come back to that one. Um, because the afterblow says that you as the attacker need to not forget that you also need to keep yourself safe, right? Um, and depending on what they also define about the double situation, uh, you know, that, that has slightly different flavors again. But fundamentally, it's about once I've done a strike, well, during my strike and after my strike, I'm still responsible for my own defense. So what it's intended to promote is once you've done a strike, not just standing there thinking, hey, great, I'm shit hot, I hit someone, 
but then actively making a choice to retreat or power your close to grapple in some way controlling it. That's how it's supposed to work. Right away is about the defender, not forgetting to defend, right? And it's about saying, okay, someone's coming at you. That's a threat. It's not a real threat because we're doing this for play. So we need to remind you to, um, to, to deal with that and, uh, and actually power it and come back in. Right, so the defense is trying to promote as the defense of the of the initial initial defender, trying to remind them your responsibility is to defend that before you can get your attack in. Right, so so in theory, both of them are supposed to promote this kind of defense. Uh, and I've said in theory, I've I've, I've weasel worded my way around that a lot um, because unfortunately, and this is why they're both a bit shit. What tends to happen to people who only fence in one of those systems is they tend to actually then to forget about. The other kind of defense, uh, which is being promoted, right? Um, and they are exactly opposite here, right? Yeah, you know, so it's, it is really a choice between two different things. Um, and unfortunately, what happens is that people forget about the other one. So I've seen this a lot with right of people who come from a culture of they do right away in their club or their tournament scene, and they come over to an alphabet system. And you see it all the time. They attack without considering their defense at all. As soon as they see an opening, they go for it. They're used to being kept safe by the rule set in that regard. Um, and they go in and they double. Or they get hit back by the after blow, right? Um, because, yes, they've the supposedly the other person's defense is important, but they now have no need to think about their defense in the attack, which is what after blow is supposed to kind of force you to do. Likewise, that my system has the reverse problem, right? You see this a lot of times that a lot of people, uh, they, you know, again, the attacks coming in and they say, well, fuck it, I'm not going to bother trying to parry uh, because if I, if I fail the parry, I might have lost my chance to get my half blow in, depending on how narrow that window is. I'm going to talk about it in a later video. Um, and, um, and they just say, well, I'll just, take, I'll just tank the hit and I'll go back and hit the head. Um, how effective that is depends on a lot of the nuance of the afterblow rule set. And, you know, again, that's what we're talking about, uh, but not in this video because I'm already over time. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the process of making the attack, I think about the defense. The defender now has said, well, fuck it, I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going just to attack. So this is why I say, right, the afterblow versus right away debate is one that really shouldn't be as hotly contested as it is because they're both shit. But you kind of need them. Right, um, you can make them less shit, uh, at least some of them, by t tweaking other things, like in terms of the weighted scoring or like exactly what happens with the afterblow. Fine, but fundamentally, at the end of the day, both of them say you must focus on this kind of defense. And the problem with that is that then everybody who becomes used to just that rule set and isn't kind of just generally fencing as they think they should then only focuses on that kind of defense and completely forgets about the other kind of defense. Um, after blow can be even worse depending on exactly how you define that, uh, that lockout window. And I think certain ways of defining it can make it even worse by also not making the attacker think about the defense. So neither one works. Um, and, I, and I don't love it when it does that. But the fundamental message I want to leave to you with is do not think that your special rule set is cool and wonderful and great just because you've got Afterblow in your local scene right away in your, your local scene. Um, I always see these debates online and in person of people coming in and saying, no, 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 this is the one true way. And the whole reason the HEMA has variable rule sets is there is no one true way, right? And unfortunately, um, you know, people will swear blue in the, till they're blue in the face that their rule set is perfect um, and that there's no doubles in their rule set because they've basically defined it out um and you know for me from an outside perspective watching right away tournaments so i've only done a few matches within them there are ways you can do them which which produces to good fencing but most right away fencers who've come over to after fencer have a very very specific and obvious flaw in their fencing that is produced by the rule set and guess what most after fencers who go to the right away system have a very very specific and obvious uh gap in their fencing uh when they go to the other rule set so Mix it up, right? Um, I would suggest people try both. Go to tournaments with both. I'm, I'm actively going to try and get to turn how this year, uh, which is um, a right away rule set, so I can put some more meat behind my own words here. Uh, there just aren't that many local to me that do it that way. Um, and, and fundamentally, yeah, uh, remember when you're writing rule sets that there are artifacts in it, and whichever one of these you choose, it's flawed. Um, but 
tough shit because whatever other rule set you come up with will be flawed as well. Thanks for watching.